Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Objects 10 for part 4 of Module uh, 1. And we've got get squared elements at property, nice little function, and two functions that are kind of lost. So you might remember that we previously did get odd length elements at property and get uh, uh, even length elements at property. So this these two problems are going to be essentially those minus the um, uh, what would you say, application of the length property. So instead of checking the length to see if the length is divided by two, gives you a remainder of one or zero correspondingly, uh, we're just gonna get the actual element. So theoretically these should have happened first, but it's okay that they're happening second. All three are the same so, uh, style of edge case verification. So we're uh, not gonna go into depth uh, heavily on those. We're just going to sort of write them out. So if object at key, is equal to undefined, return an empty array. If array dot is array. And you may be thinking, couldn't I just put this all in one if statement with or operators connecting them? Uh, absolutely, you could absolutely do that. You wanna make sure that they go in the same order. So it would be object at key is uh, equal to undefined or array dot is array of object at key is undefined, or not undefined, but object, Array dot is array of object at key is equal to false. Uh, I like to put them in three separate if statements just so uh, for people who are really beginners and are trying to get this organized in their mind, can be a little bit confusing to look at an if statement that has a ton of different conditions in it, whereas each separate if, if statement gives you an idea of like, okay, first I'm checking if it's undefined, now I'm gonna check if it's not an array, and so on. So in each case, we're gonna be returning, excuse me, an empty array. If the array is empty, it should return an empty array. Uh, I would proffer that this is one where if we create our result array and then we add things to it, if the array over which we're iterating is empty, we're not going to add anything to it, so we'll be returning an empty array regardless of whether or not the, um, uh, the array over which we're iterating has any elements. So, um, uh, let's introduce aliasing a little bit. So. Uh, I call this aliasing, although it's always uh, you always want to be careful because sometimes the word that you use to identify something to yourself is already a word somewhere else. But essentially all we're going to do is we're going to create a an identifier, which is to say we're going to say variable array is equal to object at key. Now this is not going to create a copy of the array, it's just going to give us another way to identify it. So instead of having to say object at key, we can from this point on just say array. You want to make sure that you don't do this before you check your edge cases, otherwise you might run into some problems. So a for loop is going to be iterating rather than over the object at key, it's just array.length now. We're going to introduce one more alias as we go. And if, it's, if an alias is something different and it refers to something else, I apologize, let's just call it a new name. Um, and if you can hear the motorcycles in the background, I apologize because it's about to be bike weekend here where I live. And uh, if you are a bike rider, um, you are a terrible person. No, I'm just kidding. But um, it will get loud here in a moment. Hopefully we can get most of these done before that happens. So the next alias that we're going to go over is we're going to say uh, current is equal to array at i. It's not doing a ton of, of uh, it's actually not doing anything in terms of functionality. The only difference would be uh, giving ourselves a way to identify what array at i is, something like um, current number. Now it's actually way longer than array at i, but this goes more towards understanding the code later rather than making the code faster or anything like that. Only going to do this for this problem, uh, at least for right now, and we'll say variable squared number is equal to current number times times two, and then we're going to push to the result our squared number. We could absolutely have said array at i times times two and put that all right here. Breaking it up like this can be an easier way to debug sometimes, provided that the operations happening are complicated enough, or just to make it easier for you to read later. So we sort out our edge cases, we create a result array, uh, we're iterating over the array in question, we're gonna square the current number, and then push it to the result, and then finally return the result. And we're in good shape. So get odd elements at property. I'm gonna grab our edge cases from up here, because at this point, I am growing weary of writing them. However, you should probably continue to write them out. Uh, again, rapidity with which you can type during the interview is going to be a boon rather than anything else. And that only comes from typing it over and over again. Um, 
The array is empty. There's no property. It contains no odd elements. Uh, yep, all of those are going to be sorted out by our the operation of our function because we're creating an empty array and then we're going to return it. We're going to iterate over the array, which is located inside of the object at object at key. So I needs to be less than that. Uh, if the current element, which is object at key at i, if it's, uh, what do we want? Odd elements. So we're going to make sure that if we modulo the current element by 2, we need that to be equal to 1 in order for the element to be odd. In the event that it is odd, we're going to push the current element, object at key, at i, to the result array. So check our edge cases, create a result array, iterate over the array inside of the object, check the current element to see if it's odd. If it is, push it to the result, and then return the result array. Excellent. So we're going to grab our edge cases again because it's probably going to be pretty boring to watch them be written out over and over again. And I'm actually going to stop chastising or uh, admonishing people about having to write them themselves because at this point, if you're not, you're probably not going to. Um, uh, who cares? One more. Please write these out. You would be amazed at how much better you'll be during an interview if you're not searching for characters like this or this or semicolons without having to look at the keyboard. And also, the only way that you do that is by accidentally hitting the wrong buttons several times. So, variable i is equal to zero. i is going to be less than object at key. And as you can see, I have a little bit of trouble with the brackets. They're the ones I have the most trouble with. But like everything, practice makes perfect. And in this case, practice doesn't make quite perfect, but good enough for the purposes of this video. Um, we need to make sure that the elements are even. So, if object at key... Uh, also, in case you're wondering why that happens, sometimes when you write um, a closing bracket, it'll know that you mean this closing bracket here. Uh, this editor apparently doesn't, but that's okay. So, object at key at i modulo 2 needs to be equal to 0 for the element to be considered even. If it is, we're going to push the result object at key. Ah, it did it. At i. So you also notice that sometimes it will do that, other times it won't, and that usually is a result of an error on my part as opposed to the code editor itself. Uh, you are not guaranteed a code editor on the interview, so practicing with a lot of different ones like this and Replit and um, what else? Atom, Sublime, VS Code. There's tons of text editors out there, and practicing with a couple different ones can usually be a good idea. Eventually you'll find one that you like though. So, sorted out our edge cases, created a result array, iterated over the input array located in the object, checked to see if the current element is even by checking to see if the modulo of 2 is equivalent to 0, push that in, into the result if it is, and then finally return the result, and we're in good shape. So, thanks for watching this video. Um, oh yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying the course so far, and we'll see you in the next one.